Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we got a quick tip video and behind me I have a 17 Subaru Outback and we are going to be servicing the front brakes. Now servicing front brakes is different from replacing them. This is what you should be doing in between brake pad changes to keep your pads happy and keep them going to get the best longevity out of them. So before we go ahead and begin guys, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below. Definitely smash that like button because it helps the channel out. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started on today's video. So before we go ahead and get into the service, I figured I would go over what it is and why you want to do it. So I typically recommend this once a year, guys, front and rear on your vehicle, both sets of brakes. And the main reason why I recommend it is depending on where you live, like here in Chicago, we experience a lot of salting, a lot of wetness during the winter time. And then the summertime, it can get pretty wet with a lot of rainfall. And what you do when you service your brakes is you're cleaning up any debris that may have gotten in there from road debris or weather elements like salt and things of that nature. And you're making sure any brake dust in the areas where it could possibly cause damage is being taken care of. And the way that this is typically done is you take your caliper off, you're gonna clean any contact areas as I'll show you guys here in a bit, and then you're gonna lubricate your contact areas that need lubrication. And by doing so, it keeps your brake pads and your caliper and everything moving freely the way it should be, and it doesn't cause anything to bind, which in turn doesn't cause your brake pads to wear out prematurely or possibly take out your rotor. And that is ultimately the goal here. If you wind up doing this to your vehicle, it can wind up saving you money on brakes now you don't have to do it every year i usually recommend it every year it all really depends on budgeting but this customer that i have here this vehicle they do this uh once a year and it is time for that so i figured i would show you guys how we do it and that's what we're going to do so i'm going to get you guys zoomed in here and we're going to start on this so i have you guys zoomed in and what i like to do is go ahead and position your caliper in the outward position just like that so we have a, a good way to get access to it then we're going to be taking our 14 millimeter which this vehicle has and you're going to want to remove your caliper pin now i'll show you here in a second uh, how all this works i just want to get this out of here so this is the bolt that holds our caliper slide pin in place and now our caliper is free and ready to move now if you find that your caliper is binding up in this scenario what i would do and i always recommend is grab a flathead screwdriver go ahead and put it on your caliper and you know decompress it you'll see these windows here you can put your screwdriver in and use the rotor as a backing to pull out on it and you should be able to free up enough room and compress that piston enough to get your caliper to dangle like this now for those of you that have been watching my channel for a while you know when i remove calipers i only remove the bottom pin bolt and i generally lift up my caliper and i will slide off the top pin here just like so and push it right on top here just like that now you guys can see that this thing is fully lubricated on the pin and i'll give you guys a little bit of a close-up on this as well to show you guys uh what we're doing but overall you want to get your caliper off in general on your car it may not be the same exact process as this because depending on the car you may have a different uh, style pin you could use a torx bolt it could use a regular bolt i mean it, it, there's a wide variety out there so first step is removing your caliper just like we did on this one and the way that we remove the caliper on this is right down here guys this is our slide pin that is where our caliper gets bolted up to with the bolt we removed to give you guys a little bit of an idea this is how it normally is set up you have a bolt and you have a pin. Now this is the top one that we pulled out of our caliper bracket just to show you guys a general idea of how that works. And this customer does this brake service yearly and I'll be honest with you guys, I'm actually uh, rather shocked here because I typically apply grease on here and you guys will see these are pretty dried out and you know, they're still moving, they're nice and free, but I can sense there's a little bit of binding as you guys can hear yeah there's a little bit of noise coming from them so we're going to go ahead and take care of that today now you're going to go ahead and remove your caliper i'm sorry your uh, brake pads however it is that uh they come out generally you just pull them out like that and we're going to be doing the same thing to the back side here now i'm going to have to employ my pocket knife just to use it as a little push tool here so we can get it out and you guys can see that these are still nice and thick and hardy brake pads and this is the stuff that we're trying to clean up i don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up 
but you guys can tell right there all of that crud that builds up over time on these that is what we're going to be cleaning up and also little pinpoint areas like this where we have a little bit of uh, rust that right there can potentially cause this to lock up or not fully apply and cause braking issues now overall these brake pads are in pretty decent shape uh, just general overview looking at them uh, they're not too bad they all have the same kind of wear on there uh, which is typical but either way we're going to be able to get that uh, fixed today and clean everything up we have a change of scenery we are at our bench grinder now you can do this one of two ways i have my brake pads in my hand if you guys have a brush what you can do is go ahead and brush off these areas and what you're commonly going to be working on is just these tab areas on both sides of the brake pad and also this back portion here what you want to do is just come in here and lightly take off anything that will be loose you're not looking to polish this or anything extreme you're just looking to get off any sort of debris that could be on the brake pad now the way i like to do this is using my bench grinder you guys can see i have a wire wheel i can take my pad and what I do is I'm gonna line it up here and just clean off my areas really nicely. It's quick, fast, and efficient. That's why I like using this than using uh, the wire brush, especially on brake pads that we're doing this to, mainly because you'll have some rust build up there and sometimes you need a little bit of volume. Now I'm not looking to take material off. We're not gonna be grinding anything off of here. That is very uh, key here. We're not looking to grind anything off. We're just looking to clean up our surface areas. If you want to take it off material from here, you'll have a whole other set of issues and that is not what we are doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up and I'll try to grab a time lapse of me doing so. So we went ahead and we cleaned up our areas you guys can see here. Um, that's what we cleaned up with the grinder. Now it's time to clean up the shim pack underneath. So you just lift up and this is a shim for the brake. Now if you guys have original brakes you'll have this. Sometimes the aftermarket ones will have a uh, piece like this as well. But it's usually riveted on there so you can't get it out. But on these factory pads what I do is I just take my wire brush. I just gently go over it, make sure there's no real big heavy deposits, and very lightly go on this one. Now this is a two piece, we have an aluminum side and then there is a, another aluminum piece that has kind of like a textured rubber on there. And this is also, uh, you know, used for anti-vibration, anti-noise properties on there. But once we have that off, what I do is I take a light coating of my brake lube here and I just smear it all around. What I find happens uh, over time, and you could do it uh, this way where you buy the new shims, but this rubber kind of texture area eventually uh, dissipates over time. Adding a little bit of lube to this will help it out and uh, dissipate any noise if there is any or any vibrations. And then what I do is I go ahead and I put my shim back into place, make sure it's firmly in place. And uh, now that we have that done, the next step to do to our pads is to lightly take some grease and we are going to add it to the back side of where our contact areas are now you want to be generous but also don't go too extreme on this portion of it um, you just want to make it you know nice and greased up without overdoing it you definitely don't want to get any on the surface of the brake pad so that's our first brake pad done and now we are going to go ahead and do our second one here. And same exact concept, just work it in there. And uh, you don't have to go real heavy at all, just light application. Over time guys, this brake grease that you're putting in here does wash away. It's not gonna be everlasting, but it's a good thing to do. That's why I do this yearly, because the longer you can keep grease on there, the better. Uh, these pads will slide in and out a lot better and a lot of people have a lot of mixed feelings about this Some people don't do this a lot of people like to put these in dry However, I don't like to do that. I've worked at the dealership I've worked in places where they put them in dry and put them in lube and I find the lubed ones are a lot better As long as you're not overdoing the lube the reason why when you lubricate these you can run into some issues Is because if you over lube them and you glob them and that gets on the friction material 
um, you're gonna have issues with that and on top of that if you over lube them they'll collect dust on the sides and that'll basically cause them to lock up a lot quicker so you want to avoid that just by being very liberal with uh, your lube so we are back on the car and we are looking at our caliper bracket and we do have to do a little bit of servicing up here now I'm not gonna get too in-depth here I'm gonna show you guys general basics and you can choose to do it with this still attached or removing it however you'd like uh, it's completely up to preference now depending on the car that you're working on most of them will have this sort of caliper design where you have a caliper and a bracket and they're two piece you can separate them and this bracket can unbolt from the knuckle and what I like to do in this uh, type of service guys is I will generally remove this bracket now I'm not going to show you guys that because your car may differ it may be different it's all about the general principle on this because all cars use the same general uh, type of uh, you know brake applications just different design styles so what I like to do is I'll come in here and I will remove my clips when it comes to these if you can buy new ones that's the best bet otherwise you will uh, have to clean them up if you're going to be cleaning them up we're going to be using a wire brush like this that can get into the general areas and some sort of solvent like a brake cleaner. Uh, so generally what I like to do is I take these out and I'll soak them in some brake cleaner, clean them up. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have new ones for this one because the customer kind of surprised me on this and said, hey, I want to do this today. Uh, but generally, I would try to order these up from the dealer and have them here. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't have the opportunity to. And uh, once you get those off, we do have our areas here on our caliper bracket where our pad would normally sit into, where these clips go into. And you're gonna wanna clean those with whatever method you typically use. Uh, I use a wire brush here. Uh, you guys have seen me do it multiple times. You can use a sandblaster, whatever you prefer. However, the best method is to take the caliper bracket off and do this. So that way you can get in there. Now in this vehicle, I'm just gonna use a wire brush because there's not a lot of buildup on here. It's actually really flat and smooth. It just looks a little dirty. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean those areas up and I'll bring you guys back in when it's ready for reinstallation. So I've gone ahead and I cleaned up my caliper bracket and bolted it back on. I now have my hardware that I cleaned up to the best of my abilities. You guys can see uh, completely different than they were before. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and reinstall my hardware on here. It should just go on pretty easy like it normally does, just like that. And once you put them into place, I also like to make sure that they are fully inserted. They have these little fingers down here. Now again, your car may be different. It'll differ from car to car because this can be a different setup on your vehicle specifically. So just make sure these are all nice and good and in place, which they are. Now as far as greasing anything on here, guys, I don't really put any grease on these as of now because we greased up our pad. So we shouldn't have any issues. I know a lot of people like to put grease underneath this clip. However, I don't do that because sometimes it can act like a hydraulic pressure type of device and possibly push up jamming up the pads. I clean them up, make sure they're rust free, ridge free, and nothing uh, that's gonna get in the way. Make sure everything goes back in and I will do all of my uh, lubing on my brake pad as you guys saw in the previous clip. Now we do have to do a couple things here before we can put this bad boy together. And what I like to do is I take my brush and let me make sure that you guys can see what I'm going to do here. I'll focus up on my caliper. And what I like to do is just come in here and very lightly clean off any sort of rust buildup that may happen on the piston flange and also on our fascia where our fingers are that hold our outer brake pad. So you're just going to lightly scrub. Now you're going to have to go crazy here. No power tools required, guys. Just lightly take off any sort of contamination that might get in there. And then what I like to do is give it a nice blast of brake cleaner all while it's up in here, just like that. Now that our caliper is cleaned up, we have to clean our pins. And one of them is still on our caliper here. We didn't really touch it. We left it in place. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this off. And clean up my pin now clean your caliper before you grease your pins up especially if they're still uh, left on your caliper because uh, if you guys saw we blew a lot of dirt and debris on there so you just want to make sure that uh, you save that for last and same thing with your bottom pin you're gonna want to pull it out just like so and clean up any of the old grease and this grease that's on here is compatible with what I have guys uh, 
I did this uh, job not too long ago uh, where we did the service so uh, we're just you know going to be using the same greases again and what I like to do is start off and very generously now this is the part where I tell people be generous but don't overdo it uh, you guys can see I'm adding a nice good amount of lube on here but you're not globbing it you're not trying to uh, have it hurt or affect anything one big thing too is don't put any on this end here it'll act as a little pressure uh, and it won't allow it to uh, fully uh, get in there uh, it'll just get out. so make sure you do something liberal like that and then same thing on the bottom one we are going to take a generous amount and I like to layer it on there and don't put a lot of pressure so we leave quite a bit of our loop on there you should have a nice coating just like that without it being too gloopy or globby whatever the technical term would be I don't even know that's a word but I just don't globber it on there that's the best way to put it and then I'm gonna go ahead and slide it back in burp it make sure that it's not forcing itself outward and then we should be good from here out now what we're going to be doing is go ahead and grab our brake pads and we are going to reinstall them. Now in this clip, I'm going to show you guys the outer pad uh, for the reinstallation because I got to be where the camera is for the inner. But all I'm going to do is take my brake pad that we've already cleaned up and lubed and we are just going to simply line her up and push it into place. It should go in just like that. And now you guys will notice, look at this caliper. Um, I'm sorry this brake pad sliding in and out and if you guys will pay attention from when we first started this video there's no more noise it's not making a scratching scraping noise like it was in the previous clip uh, if you guys didn't hear it go back to where we take off the caliper and I start moving these around plus previously you saw I had to pry on them and now you can literally just come in here and take them off because there is nothing holding these back so I just took mine off really easily there, so I'm going to go ahead and reapply it. And one thing you guys will notice is that the bottom does have this little spring contraption that will cause the pad to uh, pull away. The top doesn't, but you guys can see when this thing is fully in there and it's working correctly, that spring will pull up the top. Uh, so everything is good to go. This is what you should be looking at when you're done with your job. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall my inner brake pad here and I'll be right back with you guys. Now that I have both of my brake pads in, we have one less and final thing to grease up and it is going to be our caliper piston and our finger area. I'm going to get you guys zoomed up a little bit here. So my finger areas, this is what I call my finger areas, they kind of look like fingers that hold the outer pad in and then obviously we have our piston faces here. Uh, you don't have to push back the pistons or anything unless you choose to, but for my application I didn't. It may fight me a little bit on reinstallation. But we did compress them enough when we uh, took them out. So what I like to do is go ahead and just loop up my pistons just like that. Again, you don't have to go nuts here. And then on the inner channel here, we're going to loop up our finger areas. So we just put a little bit of a light coating on here. And sometimes it's hard to... Uh, get this cleaned up so if it comes up being a little dirty uh, some grease comes out on the sides you can just you know pick it up just like that and uh, that should uh, definitely be good right there once we have that coated up it's just as easy as taking your caliper and lining it back up pushing your pads in making sure that everything is going to go back into place and go ahead and drop it on there just like that now that we have that all done, all we have to do is take our bolt, go ahead and tighten everything back up, get our wheel on, and we just service our front brakes. And that's how you do a brake service on your vehicle, guys. You can apply this to almost every vehicle out there. Even if your brakes aren't like this one, let's say you have a Brembo style, the same concept applies. You want to clean up any areas that are contact points and then lubricate them and get them back on the road. Because as long as they're cleaned up and serviced, they'll keep uh, from freezing into place and giving you longevity over your brakes. And that's what we achieved with this and that's the whole point of this video. So you should be doing this whenever you get a chance. If you want to get longevity, I say at least once a year. But it also depends because warmer climate states, you're not dealing with a lot of harsh uh, environment ordeals like we do here with snow, ice, salting, things like that. 
Uh, you may get away with it going a little bit longer, but in the salt belt regions like I'm in, I usually recommend this at least once a year. It helps uh, the brakes uh, last a lot longer. And you could combine this in conjunction with another service while your car is in the shop, like an oil change or something. So either way, guys, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe because it definitely helps the channel grow. Hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.